What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to another video. We have got some great questions coming in today's video and that is because it is a and a I thought it was time that we did a Q&A video, not done one for ages and actually I get so many questions sent to me through Instagram, Twitter, loads of things and I thought why not make a Q&A video where we can just gun through and answer a few of those questions right here for everybody to see. Whilst we're on the topic of my social media, if you haven't already followed me over on Instagram and Twitter, make sure you do. You can find me at Twitter at Rob Sambles Photo. You can find me on Instagram, three different places actually, at Rob Sambles, at Rob Sambles Sport and at Scorchers Photog. Go check out those channels, follow along, comment on some stuff, like some things, send me messages if you want to over there. I always try to respond to every single message. If you didn't see me asking for questions on Instagram or Twitter, I apologize. Maybe you weren't already following me at that point, so make sure you do now. But I sent out some messages saying, hey, upcoming Q&A video, ask me some questions, and loads of people sent me questions. Thank you very much to all of you who did. So fairly chilled out one, this one. We're gonna go through, we're gonna answer the questions. Hopefully you find it interesting. Let's go, question number one. Okay, so question number one came from magsmedia.nz. Uh, I guess New Zealand based, perhaps. I hope you're doing right over there. Uh, the question was, what do you shoot during the summer when football and rugby aren't available? Cool, good question. So uh, what do I shoot? It depends. This summer, not very much at all because there was a tiny thing uh, called a worldwide pandemic <laughs> and so as I'm sure most people I didn't really shoot much at all this summer but what do I normally do well I do a few different bits I actually take some time doing some non-sport stuff altogether. there's a couple of events that I normally shoot in the summer I've done some air shows car shows um, some university events some sports with universities like the kind of end of um, term events and then the beginning of term events which are kind of in the start of the summer and the end of the summer and I normally take some time off in the summer as well normally make sure we get at least a good couple of weeks holiday vacation go away somewhere normally do a fair bit of landscape photography in that time and try to just make sure I take the time to relax there's also some of the basketball stuff carries on in the summer. There's some tournaments and camps and things like that that I do. Some off-season training sometimes with Surrey Scorch as the basketball team that I shoot for. So I normally find enough to keep myself busy in the summer. Yeah, there's not so much of like the larger sports events and the football things like that. Nope, they're not on because of course the season starts like end of August, September time and runs through till May. Good question, man. Thank you very much for asking. Right, what do we got next? So the next question comes from, oh god man, how am I going to say this, Half Lidibki? Something like that. Anyway man, thank you for your question. You asked, are you shooting any professional football these months? Uh, yes I am, yeah, I'm shooting some professional football. Not that much, um, I'm not really shooting any Premier League right now. Not really actually any EFL really at the moment. But I'm still shooting professional sports, I'm still doing all of my academy work for Fulham. Some people might not count that as professional, but, but it, it is still professional sports. And I've shot a few other bits as well. You asked specifically about football, but I'm shooting loads of basketball at the moment, which again is, is all professional sports. Because fortunately, some of those things are still allowed to go ahead. Thank you, man, for your question. Right, what have we got next? So next up, I'm Danny Boy Five said, uh, "How should I cope with rejection from a match?" Okay, man. Um, I don't know exactly what you mean necessarily. I suppose if if you mean like rejection from from getting in to shoot a match, um, I suppose it depends on why you've been rejected. I guess I mean if you got the right accreditation and and you're working for for the right type of person, hopefully you don't get rejected too often. If that's what you mean, and maybe it's because you're not at a level where you're able to get that accreditation, then look, keep keep working, keep keep growing your photos, keep growing your portfolio, so you can get in with an agency or something like that. Um, then hopefully you won't get rejected. If you mean like you've been to a match and perhaps you were rejected um, because of your, your images or something like that, man, d d don't worry. Everyone has to start somewhere, right? The first time I shot games, my images were awful and I, and I certainly felt rejected. But you keep on working, you keep on growing your skills and your image quality and there will come a time where you come away chuffed to bits with the images that you take, I'm absolutely sure. So keep shooting, man, keep plodding away. Don't worry, you'll get there, keep on going. Thank you for your question. Right, what have we got next? So this one comes from Max Be Chill. You be chill, Max. I'm certainly be chill right here. So Max, you said, would you recommend the 300mm 2.8 non-IS Mark I for someone on a budget? 
So, would I recommend it? Yes, I, absolutely I would. For someone on a budget, yes. Those lenses, especially those older model Canon Primes, the 300s, the 400 2.8s, all of them are really fantastic lenses. Even the oldest Mark I non-IS ones, they're still great, great lenses. Of course, you have to go into it open-minded. You can't go into it and expect the same kind of image quality from something like that that you would from the newest models. But provided you're aware of that, and of course you remember that's why you're getting it cheaper on a budget then it's still a great great lens you do need to consider that those lenses have been discontinued by by canon so if it's damaged or, or needs repairs or something like that you're going to really struggle to get parts and most of the major um, lens repair companies won't be able to repair it for you so you want to make sure you've got decent insurance on it just in case something goes wrong but otherwise it's a great lens certainly not something you should overlook if you're on a budget thank you max stay be chill What's next? Carlos, Carlos Snap Sports. Focus techniques. How do you manage between back button focus and setting your focus point? BBF, I assume you mean back button focus, I'm sure you do. Uh, good question. Um, so I, I don't I, I, I don't really find I have to manage between the two because you can kind of you can control two um, independently. And in fact, I, I just do that automatically without looking. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to use the 7D Mark II as an example. So my back button focus is set on the AF on button. And if I wanted to readjust the focus point, um, I would just press on the button that does that, which is further over to the right. And then I use the joystick to choose the point and then back to focusing again. So I, I actually wouldn't even take my eye away from the camera to do that. I'd be looking through the viewfinder. I'm focusing, move my point, choose it, back to focusing again. So, so I suppose the answer is you manage it fairly easily. Um, once you get used to... The, you know the muscle memory with your fingers you don't even have to take your um your hands away from the camera something specifically just in case you're talking specifically about the r6 which is a little bit different because you can do it on the touch screen now i actually turn my touch screen off when i'm shooting an event mainly because i find my nose and other bits interfere with it and start pressing stuff on the screen so instead i do it exactly the same way i use the controls on the back of the camera choose my focus point, use the joystick and back to focusing again. So I find it really, really easy, doesn't interfere and you should be able to manage the two fairly simply. Thank you, Carlos. I hope that answers your question. So what have we got next? Our next question is from Oliver Adams Photo. Any advice you would give to newcomers in sports photography? Yeah, and of course, look, loads of advice, I guess, right? Um, I think the main things are to start with, just get out there and take photos of as much as you can. Get out there and take photos of everything. Doesn't even have to be sports, but if you are talking sports, don't worry about what level it's at or, or worry about, oh, how do I shoot Premier League? Just get out there, get down your local park, find a football team that's happy for you to take photos and crack on and take as many photos as you can. Photos, 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 football, basketball, rugby your kids playing in the garden whatever you can find take photos and practice your skill from there keep on looking at the photos you're taking look at other professional photographers you admire check out their instagram check out people's youtube videos follow along and compare what's the difference what's good about their photos that you feel could be better with your photos what can you do to make it better next time keep on going through that cycle and you will start to build yourself better and better photos shoot review repeat keep on going and you'll be absolutely fine man i'm sure you're going to do real well with your sports photography keep on shooting and assuming that you were just starting out and that you were a newcomer good luck man i hope you do well okay what have we got next joe joe dent uh up at peterborough good to meet you the other day man i hope you're well uh what aspirations or what's your aspirations for 2021 good good question man what's my aspirations for 2021 so I started out in 2020 with some um, goals which I wanted for my photography and for my YouTube channel actually. A lot of which went by the wayside because of coronavirus. I wasn't able to shoot a major tournament which I certainly wanted to this summer so absolutely that's now an aspiration for 2021 to be able to do that assuming it goes ahead and coronavirus doesn't mess that up as well we'll see how we go um, otherwise my aspiration is just to keep improving keep on taking photos I'm actually going to be looking for another um, sports photography agency um, unfortunately the agency that I was shooting with before Frozen in Motion which I've talked a lot about uh, on this channel um, unfortunately that agency 
agency has closed down just for now. Um, another victim of the coronavirus pandemic, unfortunately, um, which is a real shame for me. Um, I've actually not talked about it on this channel as, uh, at all as yet. Um, but I, I love shooting for Frozen in Motion. Um, really, really sad that that's happened, but it is the way of the world at the moment, unfortunately. So I will be looking for a new agency, um, probably at some point soon, maybe before 2021, but if not, certainly going into early 2021. So if there's anyone watching out there that runs a sports photography agency and you might fancy me coming along and helping you out, let me know. Right, cheers, Joe. What's next? Okay, next up we have got one from Jamie B Photography. Jamie, your favourite lens and camera you have used and why? Who? Um, God, man, that's a tough question. So. I'll, I'll start with the favorites from, from what I have got. Um, you guys have been watching my videos. You know, I've recently got the R6 and, and I love that camera. It's gonna be fantastic for me, but you know what? It's still fairly new. So I've not been using it that that much. And my, my favorite, my long time favorite is my Canon 1DX absolutely love it but i'm loving the r6 pr probably more so than my 1dx so i think my favorite camera i've used is going to be the r6 i would show you but i'm filming on it right now and my favorite lens core that's a tough question i think my favorite lens that i own is my canon 24 to 70 uh, f 2.8 mark ii that that lens is is like a little mini one that is fantastic i absolutely love that lens and i'm finding it pairs really really well with the R6 and also my 1DX2. I have very briefly though used the Canon 400mm f2.8 the Mark III the newest one I just tried it out I haven't used it for a game or anything but even just trying it out that lens was was amazing so that's probably my favorite lens I've ever used but I haven't kind of used it properly so I'm not counting that one in so if I had to choose my Canon R6 and my Canon 24-70 f2.8 Mark II that would be my favorite ones. Okay, we got a couple from Twitter. I can't miss out your Twitter guys, don't worry. So first up from Twitter, K oh God, man, that's just like a jumble of letters. Came, Z. So man, your question was, how do you get in to shoot big sports events like Premier League? Okay, cool. Well, you know what? Um, I've actually made a whole video about that. So go check it out on my channel. It's not too long ago, a few videos back. Scroll through and you'll you'll see that. Go watch that video. But the, the answer is, um, that you have to you have to work you have to build your portfolio you have to get yourself a good set of images so that then you could go start working for somebody like an agency or a media outlet of some sort um, who will be able to get you the accreditation to go in and shoot those types of events that's the quick answer but go check out the whole video I made all about it man Kamers Z6 something something thank you for your question Okay, another one from Twitter, Andy Mots Motsberg. Andy, you asked, what's your favorite stadium that you have ever photographed at? Man, that's a tough question. Um, God, I've been lucky to shoot at quite a few stadiums. Um, I shot at Wembley, uh, shooting at the new Tottenham Stadium was cool. Uh, shot at the Emirates at Stamford Bridge but you know what I, I always go back to my favourite stadium to photograph at is Fulham Craven Cottage it's such a unique little stadium with literally with the cottage in the corner I, I love that stadium I love shooting there and luckily I get to shoot there quite a bit so my favourite stadium is Craven Cottage but I've been very lucky to shoot at some other cool arenas the O2 Arena was cool as well to shoot the NBA that's a lovely arena but if I had to choose one Craven Cottage is my favourite thank you for your question Andy Okay, what have we got next? I think we've probably got time for one more question. I don't want to make this video uh, an hour long video. I'm going to do another one of these. In fact, I'm probably going to try and do one of these Q&A videos um, at least once a month. And in fact, I'm thinking the next one we might do live, uh, like a live stream Q&A, which might be quite fun. But anyway, one more question. And we have got something else that came through on Instagram. And this is from CJM UK1. Uh, used 1DX2 or new R6 for sports? Cool, man, that is the... The question of the moment, that is the golden question. And funnily enough, I have got very, very soon a video about the 1DX versus the R6. So I don't want to spoil that too much, but I will say for a 1DX Mark II used, you could probably pick up a new R6 for a very similar price. And bearing in mind that the R6 is probably just as capable, the autofocus I think is just as good, and I also believe that mirrorless cameras will be the cameras of the future, and probably very, very soon we're going to see more and more and more movement towards mirrorless away from a traditional DSLR. So I suppose I would maybe have to say the R6 
weeks but there's a lot more to it than that and it depends on a lot of variables so stick around subscribe if you haven't already man check out my 1dx mark 1 versus r6 video coming soon okay guys and i think that just about rounds us off if you did enjoy this video do me a favor hit the thumbs up hit that like button because it helps me out loads on my channel and i really really appreciate it whilst you're there maybe think about subscribing if you haven't already loads of other videos coming on my channel stick around and check those out in the meantime guys thank you very much for watching and i'm gonna see you on the next video